And welcome back to another episode of the show with the cats. Rent Strike Cats and Scratchy Cat are in today's Coffee News Studio with the support of Dr. X Cat Cat. Let's come to the first topic. Our short news starts with a story from the US, security under attack. In the US there is again a new law in progress where far right and conservatives try to push through the agency of secret service and other similar groups. Under the topic of anti-terror and other similar claims they want to end end-to-end encryption. The idea is a backdoor by providers. Security-wise, this would mean end for services with high security standards like Signal. We loudly and clearly speak out against this and any other form of surveillance. More on this in our link list. Lockdown in Gütersloh. Corona outbreak in Tony Smith Manufactory. Have you ever imagined being part of a lockdown story in northern Germany? Uh, where whole streets are blocked off, 7,000 workers are in quarantine. Workers from a meat manufacturer who admits mistakes. The consequences of a corona outbreak at Clemens Tonis are more than serious. Schools and daycare centers in the district are closed again. And there are new allegations against the company. Hygiene regulations could have been violated for some time, but Tonis denies that. This story came out a week ago. A German reportage from Der Spiegel shows that this manufacturer made propaganda videos to ignore the new hygiene solutions to still be able to produce cheap meat. The usual bad working conditions there got even worse. Workers are held in little rooms in Freeman groups. Two streets where most of them live got locked down for 14 days. More than 1,300 corona infections have been reported. It's the corona hotspot or of North Rhine-Westfalen's uh, place called Gütterloh. Uh, the affected people are mostly from Eastern Europe and employed from external companies. The lockdown is now expanding. To the end of to to end the story with something positive, here is how you act when people are held in lockdown. Let's have the next topic. Fascist attacks in Vienna, hashtag EKH. In the last days, a series of fascist attacks were going on in Vienna. The first incitatant is in this direction already happened a while ago, when on 1st of May, a left-wing and Kurdish May Day manifestation was attacked by the so-called Grey Wolves. In the last days, these attacks happened again in multiple forms. It began when on Wednesday, 24th of June, a Kurdish feminist manifestation against femicides was attacked by fascists. They were clearly showing signs of Daesh and the Grey Wolves. The police was standing by and not reacting. Also, when the fascists were later gathering in front of the close by EKH. The EKH is an autonomous social center and housing project that is an important place for the radical left as well as for progressive Kurdish groups that have a place for an association in the first floor then. EKH became the hashtag for this conflict that escalated within the next days. On the 25th, more attacks followed, in the evening against AKH with stones and firework, including nearly setting a house nearby on fire, and against the Progressive Works Association, die IDF, that is close by. Dirty mostly young fascists smashed the windows, the attacks could get bashed back by the antifascist self-defense. While the police was once again standing by the letting fascists pass and attack people. On 26, the demonstration called in by a lot of anti-fascist groups did gather in front of EKH. only to be stopped soon by attacks of the fascists who did follow the demo and set various provocating acts. In the end of the demonstration, police al- only allowed the anti-fascists to leave in groups of 10, an invite that was used by the fascists around and several attacks on small groups of people leaving the demo did happen with this situation. On the 27th, then, another demo with around 2,000 people participating did follow, going to Turkish embassy. This time it was way less tense. 
But the chronic of his days shows how dangerous the situation is right now in Vienna and that further attacks are only a question of time. Problematic is also the role of the mainstream media. Important is also to see the role of the media. In many articles, they did try to depolita depoliticize the conflict or to show it as, as ethnic conflict in between Turkish and Kurdish groups, also ignoring the fact that uh, the far right could only plant their seeds within youth with migration background because of far right wing politics creating an atmosphere where they are they and other groups do not feel the belonging of Viennese and Austrian society. Belonging to a place and to aim for a good life should be possible everywhere. Fascism in all its variations will always stand in that way towards utopia. Alerta, alerta, antifascista. Alerta, alerta, antifascista. Resources for the police-free society. We found a list on the web about resources for a police-free society. Of course, this list is not finite. But these are some great places to start with if you're looking to learn more about what the world without police might look like and how we might get there. This is a short, powerful introduction to the concept of abolition, available as a text in English or Spanish, as a printable, foldable zine, and page by page at their Instagram, posted by the EMPD 150, the Minneapolis Police Department. They posted the article, Enough is Enough, a 150-year performance review of the Minneapolis Police Department, which is online on their website as well as other action ideas for building a police-free future, like number one, an easy one. Stop calling the police when it's clearly unnecessary. Support organizations that really do keep our communities healthy. Get trained in first aid, crisis de-escalation, restorative justice, etc. Build community all the time, not just in times of trouble. Make a list of local servi services, hotlines you can call instead of a police. Dream bigger. There was a time before police, and there will be a time after. Some of the solutions we need don't exist yet. There are some things we can do now, but this work is also about planting seeds. A, fir a vital first step towards a police-free future is simply being able to visualize what that future will look like. On mpd150.com, you can find other books and article resources which discuss the and give ideas for a police-free society. Ah! <laughs> the tweet of the day. Okay. Where's the tweet of the day? I can find it. Here's it. <laughs> the tweet of the week. Not today. Okay. Pol now we come to the tweet of the week. Police and Ethnographic Picture Series. This was posted by Crime Inc. If your opposition to police oppression is consistent, you oppose the new security law the Chinese government is forcing on Hong Kong and the persecution of the migrants in European Union, as well as the racist police murders in the US. More on http.w slash 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 CVC in cops. That's wrong. But you see anyways here in the picture, the tweet. The Congress Future for All takes place from 25th to 29th August in Leipzig and online. There is a time for visionary politics. Instead of letting the climate crisis and the rise of the uh, right get us down, the Congress will develop, share and discuss visions of society which go beyond the need for capitalism growth. They want to bring people together who are working on a better future in very different ways. Submissions can deal with the following questions, for example, what do utopias of freedom of movement look like? How can strategies be sensibly combined and complemented? Which alliances do we need? Which impulses from the global south and other movements are relevant for struggles for freedom of movement? How can the European border regime be replaced by alternatives based on solidarity? In the struggle for freedom of movement, we must be many. More to read in German at uh, HTTPS Zukunft für alle dort jetzt. We now come to the Kavya news. We are building a transnational network. During, during the lockdown period, Kavya was a platform for many people to maintain their political activity. People from many different groups and areas like system change, degrowth, asylum and human rights, or feminism, right to the city, rent strike, 
cultural work, artistic work, social work, self-help groups, and so on, even from regions who had no, not known each other before, met there and together built up structures and organized various actions. After the end of the lockdown, many returned to their groups to continue the political work there. For Kovyu, the question now arises of how we can use the network that has emerged meaningfully and strategically for transnational political work. If you have any idea and if you want still to join us, come to our website and visit kovyu.info. Kovyu music update. Lavender Witch. Spell. Now to some short music vibes. Lavender Witch is a feminist band based in Brussels, Belgium. They play witchy, doomy rock and en enchanting punk. Each Wednesday night, when the moon is bright and the stars align, five witches convene, plotting to take over the punk music scene and put a hex on a patriarchy. Together we stand, one coven holding hands, bound by sisterhood. A women's international terrorist conspiracy from hell. We all have the power against the poison that is patriarchy. Lavender is the herb that has fought against the tyranny of man. Lavender is the menace that will wipe out the oppressor. As above, so below. As within, so without. We now want to say goodbye and see you in two weeks. Thank you for watching. Cover news. See ya.